we've been coming out here since our project started in April of 2008. It's been one of the core properties that we access for our research. Mountain lions are a secretive creature. They're professional hiders. That's how they make their living. So it's no wonder that people rarely see them. They hide and they don't want to be seen. And if they don't want to be seen, more or less, they're not going to be seen. The lion went about 60 feet up in a tree. The cats have gone up the tree because they're trying to get away. So sometimes they go up too high, where if we were to anesthetize the lion and it didn't come out of the tree before the drugs took effect, it could fall out. And so the plan now is to try and coax him out. Hey! Hey! Come on now, boy. Come on down there. In the five years since we started our project, we've learned quite a bit about how they interact with people or how they relate to people. Lions will move through and around and also hunt in and near places where people are active, around their homes, because it's kind of a different world when it's dark out. The animals come out of the hills and that includes mountain lions. Human housing and activities and uh, development, they do affect mountain lions by splitting up the open space areas that were once intact. You know, at one point, the whole Santa Cruz Mountains were one giant open space, but it's been kind of slowly fragmented into smaller and smaller places so that they have to find corridors and ways to get from one of those areas to another so that they can find each other, so that they can breed with each other, they can you know, share their genetic diversity with each other. In order to understand how mountain lions are impacted by human development, we place tracking collars on them to look at their movements and better understand their behavior. That tracking collar has a GPS, which tells us where the animal is moving. It's also got an accelerometer, which we're using to tell us a little bit about what the animal is doing. We fly over the study area once a month, and from a plane, we remotely download the GPS data using radio technology. Once we've collected all this data, we can start to look at how mountain lions behave differently when they're near human developments like people's homes or farms than when they're out in the wild, far away from those kinds of influences. Here's an example of mountain lion 18F. Each point here represents an actual GPS location four hours apart in time for this mountain lion. I can then sort of show you the whole data set at once. And so you get a feeling for, you know, how big her home range is, how close she'd get to the city of Santa Cruz. And she really used this highly fragmented area of the Santa Cruz landscape. So right now I'm gonna get out the drugs that we use. Mix up a dart with uh, an anesthetizing drug, and then we'll go around and pick a spot and fire the dart. And then the drug will take effect as it runs off, and we'll take one of the dogs on leash and go find it. Three, two, one. Where he goes. There's your cat. You might see him around over here. Not quite out, but almost. Sometimes they're still moving around a little bit and you know, moving their face around. So we lay them on a clean tarp. We don't want them to be burying their face in the dirt and getting their nose in the dirt. So I'm going to take a, this tracking collar and uh, we're going to fit it on her neck. So we should learn quite a bit about this girl. There's testing that the collar is working. Working great. We do measurements of their overall body length, their tail. We measure the length of their limbs. We measure their teeth, their foot pads. We collect a blood sample so that we can get prior exposure to diseases from antibodies in the blood and also genetic material. And then also we put an ear tag in one of the ears to help identify the animal. In the five years since uh, we started our project, we've collared 37, now 38 after today, mountain lions. 
87 pounds. Once we're finished with our handling of the mountain lion, we've put the collar on and we've taken all of our measurements and collected samples. From a distance, we watch the lion until we're confident that the effect of the anesthetizing drugs is worn off enough that the lion will be safe and can move off safely. As the world gets increasingly developed by humans and large wide open spaces of natural habitat get parceled into smaller and smaller pieces, these are the species that are affected first and start to blink out of ecosystems as they become more developed by engineering or protecting the ecosystem in a way that's good for them, we'll also be helping a number of other species.